Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm sure you've heard all the buzz around Llama 4, which was recently dropped late last week, and even built up some really cool controversy within the AI community. With many people saying they use bait and switch from their test results by submitting a specially crafted non-public variant of Llama 4 to increase or boost their benchmark results, but I'm not going to go through all the benchmarks and how they stack up versus other LLMs. Today I wanted to see a real hands-on way to show if this model is actually a sham or if it's still useful in incorporating into your AI agents and workflows given the rocky start it's had. Since Llama 4 models are natively multimodal, meaning it can natively process both images and text as inputs and generate textual outputs based on image understanding. This is a perfect model for the workflow and AI agent, which I'll be walking through today. I built an AI agent using computer vision that can look at a property listing, go through the photos and tell you if it's a fixer upper or a new house that is move-in ready. So no more doom scrolling through Zillow trying to find real estate deals to fix and flip. It will also act as your general contractor and give you a breakdown of potential upgrades and costs that will be incurred. So we can go to Zillow and demo this property, which is visually very bad. We can copy the address, enter it in this form here, which will be captured into our Airtable database. And we can go and test this workflow, which will grab that record, search that address on Zillow, calculate some investment metrics, look at the curb appeal of the property to see whether it's a new house or a fixer upper. And since it is a fixer that we know, it will go down this path and loop through other pictures, do a deep dive into those pictures, get some ideas of what can be improved, and then call your general contractor with those ideas and update the record. We can see that we now have full description of the property with its rating being a fixer. So if we pop out this description, this is our general contractor saying major updates will be needed to restore the property and replacing boarded up windows. So I was able to see from those pictures that it was boarded up windows and reevaluate the roof for potential leaks. And a rough estimate of upgrades could be between 50 to $100,000, depending on the extent of the repairs once the interior conditions are assessed. And we have the photos here of the property. And we see we also have houses that are rated as new. We can find a new house such as this one and put this one through as demo as well and see if it's actually able to distinguish if this house is new or not. So we'll go back to our form submission, paste that address in there and test this workflow once more. So once again, it'll go through the turbo check. We'll see that it switched and went down to the new path and didn't look at any more pictures. And we see we have this house captured with new rating. So jumping straight into N8N on a step-by-step -step how I built this and my thoughts of working with Llama 4 with the Maverick model and the Scout model with this workflow. So first starting off with the Airtable trigger, I went with the Airtable route as this is the easiest way to get a form based on a database spun up as quickly as possible while only having one third party service vendor. So if we go back to our Airtable, we can go to forms, we can click add new form and it will build a form directly off the Airtable database that you have built. So if you see we have address, description, rating, upgrades, every column that you add with an Airtable can be immediately put into this form, which makes it very quick and very easy. And you can go ahead and create this form. And once you click publish, you can get a quick embed link here where you can embed this into an existing website. So once we pull that record from Airtable, we go into a Rapid API using a Zillow search endpoint, which I have a video fully setting that up, which I'll link here. But essentially it's just grabbing that address, which was entered in the form and searching it via Zillow and giving us a ton of data output, including not only the price, the square foot, some of the taxes that are associated with the property, and then all the images that are uploaded with the listing. And next, we'll jump into the investment calculator, which will pull a lot of the pricing, the rent estimate, to eventually calculate a lot of the outputs, which you see here, which is the monthly expenses, monthly cash flow, cash on cash return, and the mortgage payment. And you see that it deals with some assumptions that you can change within the code, which is down payment percentage, interest rate, loan term, vacancy rate, etc. And from that code node, it updates that record based on the investment metrics that we just calculated. So if we go back into Airtable, we see that we have the price, monthly cash flow, and the cash on cash return updated to this record. And next we get into using Llama 4 and actually seeing the images. So I have a quick prompt here saying that it's getting a listing photo and that it's a real estate expert and to label a house as either new or a fixer and just return one word based on the photo that it sees. So through this long output here from the address search, you'll get a long list of images. And this is just using the first profile image of the listing. And you see that with this node, I'm using the open router chat model, the Llama 4 Maverick being used. So based on this output, either a new fixer, which routes it to either go down the new path or the fixer path. And the new path will just update the record within Airtable to say that it's a new property. 
and then down the fixer path, it would do exactly as you would do. It would go past that first photo and look through multiple different photos to honestly assess how that property looks and what potential upgrades you could do. So down the fixer path, it ends up grabbing the images that were upserted to the Airtable database. So it'll go to these images here, pull these images to end up feeding into our Llama 4 LLM. So from there, it enters into a code node. And honestly, this is the hardest part that I had with the entire workflow, which was structuring how I was going to look at more pictures and loop through that. As with Airtable, depending on how you save the column, it was essentially giving back a result that was an object within an array, and that needed to be parsed out to be able to adequately loop through and be able to go through the workflow once more. And another important note within this Airtable node, as I only had output fields of the image two and three. I didn't have any of the other outputs. Another way I tried to do it was with a set node and exclude multiple different values because the Airtable node was returning the record ID as well, which I didn't want the record ID going through the deep dive. So once we only have the image URLs, we then loop through each image URL one more time. You see that I only had two extra images. You can put as many as you want as possible. But for the purpose of this video, I wanted to keep it short and concise and only include two extra images. Going into this deep dive node, it's essentially a basic LLM chain with a prompt here, just saying review the pictures of this average or fixer home and give one sentence explanation on what could be upgraded. And then I added a prompt for a user and said that the message type would be image URL and pass that image URL to get this to work. And you see I'm using open router node, which, which is routed to the Llama 4 Maverick. And after it routes through and gives the one or two sentences, for the images, it then aggregates that text into one single item to be able to pass on to our sub workflow and to our general contract. This Airtable node will then go to our Airtable record, get the description to pass on to the general contractor. As a lot of times in housing listings, they will say a lot of the upgrades needed in the description if it's a bad enough property. So I thought that was valuable information to give to a general contractor or give to our AI agent to be able to assess along with the image descriptions. So as you can see, it's just operating, getting that Airtable record and only outputting the description field from the grid list view. And then lastly, it finally gets past our general contractor, basically saying that you will receive text summarizing house for sale and potential upgrade ideas, and that you'll also get the listing description to see if it mentions any potential upgrades needed. And write a one item paragraph summarizing the updates suggested and provide input from your contracting and opinion and give the cost breakdown of the project. And lastly, use the update record tool to add to the summary of the Airtable database. So it will go through the image descriptions provided by our Maverick 4 deep dive node and go through the description of the listed property. And based on that information, we'll give a final say and cost breakdown and add this to our Airtable database to be listed as you see here. And guys, my honest opinion of Llama 4 using Maverick as well as Scout for this, I also use Gemini to kind of give a comparison. And from what I learned, Maverick 4 is just a little bit more specific and matter of fact. When some of the other LLMs were able to work with some of the prompts that I gave it and still get to the desired outcome, for example, in this curb check, I had an extra period right here and it worked fine with Gemini or some of the open AI models. However, with Maverick 4, it actually output fixer period, which ended up not being able to route it down the fixer path because this was set to only equal to fixer. And so it was things like that that I noticed with Maverick 4 that you have to be really explicit on how you're prompting it and explaining your desired outcomes. And that's it for today's video. If you like this content, if you got any value from it, like, subscribe, truly means a lot. And if you want this entire innate in JSON workflow, join the community, which will be linked below. And until then, see you guys.